when we think in terms of back crossing, there's so many different, and that's 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 back, back crossing is is a, is a topic within itself. I think uh, it's it's another uh, tool that's very loosely um, thrown around, uh, and, and people have uh, little to no knowledge when it comes to back crossing. They don't understand it. You know, most most people's understanding is you take a mother to the to the offspring, and that's a single back cross. That's a simple single back cross, and it has its own purposes. But then you have a a, a trans a, a, a more more uh, more in depth back cross uh, where it's it's recurrent, where um, you're continuously back crossing through five or six times in order to receive a certain percentage of the recurrent parent. You have a recurrent parent and a donor parent. Uh, the donor parent is there strictly to offer you a, a particular gene. Uh, so that gene is going to be fixed into your elite line versus you could, and this is when having knowledge uh, gives you confidence because um, in many cases you would take your elite line, whatever it is you're working, let's say um, it is missing one particular thing like uh, mold resistance. But other than that, it's top-notch perfect. So you would be willing to take the most uh, crappiest of plant as long as it has the proper gene for mold resistance and do an outcross. Once you make that initial outcross, you end up 50-50. That 50-50 you're going to select based on that gene that you're, tr that you're tracking down. Um, which is mold resistance. You go back to the recurrent parent on a back cross. That then makes a new population of 25-75, which means 75% identical to the recurrent parent, 25% to what we know as the donor parent, because we only need one thing from it. And as long as we continue, the further we continue to back cross to the recurrent parent, we push out the genes for the donor parent until eventually you end up with about 98.6% at about six, six times, if I'm, my math might be wrong, but about 98.6% um, identical to the recurrent parent, but um, only maintaining one thing, which we selected for, which is that mold resistance. So everything else, the, the, the not frosty, the runt, the, all of that stuff is pushed out. And that is a, uh, uh, that's a real back cross. A single back cross is a little bit different. It's going to give you the ability to take uh, a gene from one parent and uh, introduce it into the background of another parent, but it's 50-50 still. So you still have 50% of the genes from the donor and 50%. So it's going to be a, a much faster um, result, but a lot of work that needs to be done behind it versus a recurrent back cross, which you can... Instead of just introducing a new gene, you're fixing the gene. And then we have third, the third back cross, which I'll mention real quick, and I, I won't keep rambling on, but um, it's a test tree, uh, a, a test cross, I'm sorry. And a, and a test cross is basically um, using a back cross as a way to identify a certain gene that may be dominant and determine um, whether that gene is dominant or recessive and end up with the correct ratio uh, by, by back crossing. So if we end up with a one-to-one, -one, then we know it's a heterozygous dominant. If we end up with a completely um, all the same dominant of all the offspring, then we know it's homozygous dominant. And that's a test cross, which is also a back cross as well. So do your research on back crosses, everybody. It's not that simple. It's, it took my guys who have a really strong, I mean, three years in just the basics, it took them about four days to really grasp the concept of back crossing. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.